Canada has become so unaffordable that some are now even renting half of their bed. True story? I don't know. But that got me curious to see, can you actually survive on minimum wage in Toronto? I'll look at the most typical expenses like rent, groceries, transportation and bills and try to paint a picture of what life on minimum wage looks like in Toronto. Okay, so how much is minimum wage? In Ontario, at the time of filming, minimum wage is $16.55 per hour. Wow. Back in time when I worked on minimum wage in Quebec, I remember my pay was $9.25. And then one year it got bumped to $9.75 and I was ecstatic. Good old days. But if you look at it, it's actually not that impressive because the cost of living has gone up at much faster rate than that. So how does Ontario minimum wage compare to the other provinces today? Well, it's in the top three highest minimum wages in Canada after British Columbia and Yukon. Quite a group right there. Assuming you work full time and have all these standard deductions, your after tax monthly take home is somewhere between 32 and 33K depending on exact hours you work and deductions you have. Let's take the minimum, 32K per year. With that amount, your average tax rate in Ontario would be around 17%. After tax, you will have $26,566 per year or $2,214 per month. So that's it. 2214, that's the number that we will be working with. Okay, so remember, we have rent, groceries, transportations, and bills. If you live on minimum wage, this is not the situation where you'll be splurging on entertainment, shopping, or travel. It is called minimum to support minimum needed standards of life. Ideally, a wise thing to do is not to spend more than 30% of your monthly income on rent. So let's see if we can use that as a benchmark. Can you find something for $664 per month in Toronto? Let's see. Okay, so there are options, but not many. Um, honestly, they're kind of looking a bit sketchy. Let's see if we can increase the budget. Okay, so it looks like there are a lot more decent options for $1,000. And you can rent a room in Toronto or GTA area for that amount. So let's make our rent 45% of the income. That's, that stinks. That's a big amount, but let's see where it takes us in the end of all of the spendings. One thing that's clear from the start is that the entire GTA area is pretty expensive. The only thing I noticed though is that $1,000 goes much farther in terms of perceived quality of your room the farther you are from Toronto. And if you were in any other smaller city like Regina, Saskatoon, Edmonton or Winnipeg, you could rent a one or even two bedroom apartment for this budget. We talked about it in this video. The cool thing is that if you're sharing an apartment here, utilities are included, so you're saving hundreds of dollars a month on bills, potentially. And some rooms come furnished, so that's a win. Okay, so at this point I'm just curious how much are the average monthly bills for a studio apartment. So we have hydro, water and internet. Personally, I will never pay these crazy prices for internet. There are always deals going on and I highly recommend finding them. No one should pay more than 60 bucks for the internet in the 21st century. We've talked about how to find better deals and save money in this video. So make sure to check the description box below for links. Utility bills depend on your consumption, which varies depending on the season and even time of the day. But for a small studio apartment, you'd probably look at around $100 monthly. If you're renting in GTA, you will be likely required to pay for tenants insurance. This is typically around $30 a month. In total, we have around 200 in monthly bills that we are saving by renting a room versus a studio. Not to mention that cost of a studio is much higher than a room. If you guys have any experience renting a room, let us know in the comments below if it's worth it and what people should watch out for. So if we go with renting a room for $1,000, now we have $1,200 $114 left over. Next up, let's assume that we need to commute to work. On that amount of money, we should probably take public transit. Depending on where we choose to live in GTA, we would need to make sure that we can commute there via TTC or GO train. If you're a student, some fares are actually cheaper. But let's assume that we're not a student since we work full time. The monthly pass for TTC would be $156. Oh look, um, they actually have a fare pass transit discount program. Let's see what this is. Okay, so this is a program for low income families. How do I know if we qualify for that with minimum wage? Let's use our friend Google. 
Okay, so here we go. As a single person, we need to meet some of these criteria. The net annual family income, $20,000. Net income. Okay, so how much is that? Apparently, we make too much to be considered a low-income person in Ontario. In other words, we need to make around $10 or $11 per hour to be considered low-income or work less than 40 hours a week. Wow, Toronto, you surprise us once again. Okay, so we will pay $156 per month for transit. That's $1,058 left over to spend. Okay, so let's see what we can eat for a month with this amount of money. Let's go grocery shopping. Okay, so since we are assuming that we work a minimum wage, we're obviously not going to shop at more expensive shops like Metro, Loblaws, or Longos, or any of the other fancy chains. We're probably gonna stick to Walmart or No Frills or maybe Freshco. We actually made a video about grocery prices in Toronto last year, comparing an expensive grocery shop with a cheaper one. We created a list of some essential weekly grocery items, so we will use that for this video. So here's the list. It basically strikes a good balance between carbs, proteins, and fruits and veggies, as well as some yummy snacks on the list to treat yourself. Obviously, this list is not comprehensive. There's things like oil, coffee and tea and spices that you won't get every single week. And maybe you won't even get a pack of rice so often. So we will estimate and add that in the end. Let's go shopping. Milk, cheddar cheese, four chicken breasts, salmon fillet, eggs, bread, oatmeal, chocolate bar, local apples, bananas, oranges, tomatoes, potatoes, onions. Okay, so this is the grocery bill we got. It's $80.07. I think this should be pretty much enough for a week. We're assuming that we're shopping for one person. If you're a couple, the math actually gets a lot better. In fact, Toronto and Canada in general unfairly punishes single people. It is a lot more financially beneficial to be in a relationship or have roommates to share expenses with. But this topic is for another video. So our grocery bill for one week is 80 bucks. We multiply that by 52 weeks and divide by 12 and we get this amount. This is the rough amount of money that you should expect to spend on grocery in GTA every month, assuming that you shop at more affordable stores. Let's add a pack of rice, tea, coffee, and oil, and some spices to be fair. Rice, tea, I'll choose stress relief tea. It's stressful to be on a tight budget, you know? Coffee, oil, salt, and pepper. This comes to 37.15. Let's add it to our monthly groceries cost. So far, our total for groceries per month comes to 384.12. That leaves us with $673 of disposable income. That's not a lot, but it's actually more than expected. If you like to splurge on food, your grocery bill could easily eat all of that disposable income, especially if you like soft drinks, chips, crisps, chocolate, sweets, and other junk food, because sales tax is imposed on these products, but not on basic groceries like fruits and vegetables. Another important monthly expense is cell phone, for which we will budget $50 a month. This is not cheap, but there are plans you can get for 15 to 20 bucks. But if you want data, that's gonna be double the price. And if you want a new phone, it can be additional $10 a month or more. I personally pay about $40, I have my own phone, and I call my provider from time to time to negotiate the price down. Always shop around. There are deals happening every other month, especially on Black Friday and Boxing Week. Now that we've covered all essentials, we can think about the nice to have. We have $623 left, remember? Let's say we wanna go out with friends once or twice a month. For instance, a movie ticket is about $17 or 12 on Tuesdays. An average bar check is easily 50 to 100 bucks, so you could use that money to go out once or twice a month too. If you want to stay in shape, a monthly gym membership is about 45 bucks. But you know, jogging in the nearest park is free. And if you want to go on vacations once in a while, let's assume that you put $200 away in savings. And with that, you can technically afford one nice all-inclusive vacation somewhere in the Caribbean. This leaves us with $200 $161. We can put that away as an emergency savings account each month, which is a pretty good amount. We can also invest or buy clothing or something else, or you can use it to pay off debts if you have any. So these are all the expenses broken down if you were to live in GTA on minimum wage renting a room. We grossly averaged everything, and there's probably some expenses that we've missed. So do let us know in the comments below what you end up paying a month in this area. Where do your money go to? Let us know in the comments below. And if this video was was helpful to you, just leave a like and subscribe if you don't want to miss our future videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you want to support us, you can do so by using the links in the description. Take care. And I'm gonna go take a sip of my stress relief tea.